Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain the interface of eTabs, general information on the program. Now, eTabs is one of the commonly used program for analysis design of building. So it's made for the purpose of analysis and design of buildings. It's a family of CSI, which comes with many other programs. They have interaction with each other that can be used for the purpose of infrastructure design. Now this is version 19 of ETABS. The interface is a bit different than the other versions. So when you open ETABS, this is what you will see. Some other programs from the same family, which if you're interested in, you'll be able to use them for the infrastructure design. Now, the idea of using ETABS is that you're going to model a structure. So you have the structure. When I say you have the structure, there is an architectural plan, which the location of the columns, the type of the floor system, the load, you have them, you bring it to ETABS, you model the structure. So modeling the structure is the first part, defining the material assigning the load after modeling you'll follow them then you're going to analyze those the structure and analyzing the load type that you have it then we'll follow by design using the standard codes then we'll be detailing so the process that we're going to do we have modeling assigning the loads assigning the materials analyzing the structure, designing it, and then detailing. Also, we can take bill of quantity for the concrete and steel. So, let's go over the interface of Revit. When you open Revit, so the first thing you're going to do is to start with a model. So whether you have an existing model that you need to continue over them, or you will create a new model. So if you don't see this one, for sure you have it here open new even if you don't see this one within file you can still have new or inside file you have new model you have open or you can import from other programs which you will see if rivet it's one of them that can interact with etabs the others as well you have them dxf files databases from the stat for cut, some other programs and IFC file that they can save with you. You can send it to eTabs for the generating the model and then using it for analysis and design. And here, as you can see, CSI Rivet is one of the extension that is used between the Rivet and eTabs for detailing, bringing exporting things from one to another now we're not going to go into those detailing those are for later if you're interested to use them we'll start with the new model in order to explain what do we have we we'll start with new model now when you start with new models first you initialize the model which settings you're going to use so the settings which you talk about them since you're going to model and using this model for analysis and design now the analysis they're all similar. But when it comes to design, there are codes. The code that you're going to be used depends on the country, the location that you're working or you're designing the building for. Now, some people, they have their own default setting, means that they're working in a country. They will, they have the, let's say that you did some projects and you have those detailing saved in a computer or inside a model 
then you can reuse them always for the design if you're working in one place but if you for example you don't have these things you will go for the built-in settings that the codes available within the program so i recommend to start with here with here built-in settings so first is the display units we're going to go for metric si for the steel design section steel design code concrete design code you can select any dependent on the location that you are working if available here you'll choose from here so let's say that we're choosing one of the codes this is ACS, this is AICS for steel design code for ACE for concrete let's say it's ACI after selecting the codes you press ok those can be changed as well no worries it can be changed In the beginning you can set them the unit is important the unit is important you set the units at the end the report analysis design will be based on the units that you select in the beginning so you press ok now after that ATAPS will ask you to create the model now here let's explain this part here it consists multi small window so there's one part here there is a second part and the third part we have it here now first you will choose the type of structure object that you want to select now what does that mean since ETAP made it for building so they have the systems that are quick templates that you can use them for the building now what do you mean by floor system I have we have two-way rivet slab waffle slab flat slab with perimeter beams flat slab staggered truss steel deck grid only blank now if you have a floor system which is one of those you can directly select from here which if you click on it it will ask you extra information by default grid only is active you can click on any of them it will promote a new window that you have to enter information regarding to this the system that you selected we'll come back to them when we have a structure let really to explain how to deal with this quick templates here now on the top we have grid dimension and story dimension now the grid dimension also divided into two categories one is uniform one is custom grid now this is the grid lines that architecture will provide it to us that we can use it as structural engineer to, do, to use it for model the building and use it for analysis and design or basically for the modeling then the second part is the story again it consists of two parts and then the custom now the top part is uniform both of them this one and this one are for uniform or symmetry building if your building is not symmetry you simply just select the custom one you will input the data i'll come back to those in detail because normally we don't have symmetry buildings so we go for custom grid spacing so this is if you have four by four four grid four grid distance between them eight meter eight meter like everything will be eight by eight or you can make it different but still in one direction all the spacing will be similar that's why we call the uniform grid spacing for the story dimension similar you have for example four story each story three meter the first the bottom story height three meter again you don't have chance to change the story heights for each of them this is uniform a right? simple story data if not we're going to go to custom and we need story data by ourselves we'll come back to this one on a project that will happen so what will happen if you click on for example here flat slab one click it will bring the geometry and property of flat slab because those systems they have the requirement of this minimum data that you have to provide it to them 
and you'll see that there are a lot of information here that you have to provide it when you press ok then still you have to provide the grid so the grid and story data regardless of those you have to provide them but if you click on any of those except the grid and blank not pop up anything any of them if you click on it it will provide you or ask you some information regarding to that structural flooring so this is something we'll come back to them directly we'll apply things here well let's just go with the grid i'm not touching anything here i'll just press ok to explain the interface at least to be familiar with rivet now when you open let's say the model a grid line you had it or something you created this is the interface that you will be working with in ETABS. First thing that you will see, you have three views, which you can adjust them later. Three views, two, and there's one model explorer. Model explorer. Now, model explorer has all the information regarding to the building. So it's model for now. It, it will come analysis and design. Everything will be here detailing that you can find anything regarding to the project, this project that you'll do it. So it consists of different part, display, table, reports, everything that you want, it will be within this part here. You can access anything, almost anything for the project. As a project, you open it here, project information. This is the project information, client name, project name, company name, logo, whatever you have it. You can simply add anything, access any information regarding to the project the thing i told you for example any of them's concrete frame design it will bring you the design code all the information regarding to the code will be here which you can adjust them change them if you willing so now this is model we will see while working with it we will come here sometimes if you need something to change it or to access it. The other two part we have it is the views. So by default, this 3D view and plan view, you can see it here. So those are related to what you will see them here. Let me just talk about those. I'll talk about this part here. You have the name of it is written here, plan view, story 4, Z equal to 12 meters. So exactly which one will be here. And this is a 3D model. You can change them. You can change them. Why? Because you have what? You have 3D. You have plan and you have elevation. We already know that when we have a buildings, we have three main views, plan, elevation, 3D. Now, let's talk about uh, the way that ETAP's working with those. Now, for the plan view, it's based on the story. Now, I'm not going to go into detail of them, why it's written story for or can I change the story in a, uh, name to something I want? Yes, you can. I'll talk about this one later. Now, if I click on the plan, but before that, when, whenever you click somewhere uh, inside the view, you will see it will be activated. So if it is light blue here, it means that this view is activated. Click here, this view activated. Because if you change something, the activated view will be changed. Let's say if I click inside here, the 3D, and if I click on the elevation, you will get some letters here a b c d one two three four which stand for the grid line that we have because when we look for elevation basically you from the sides you're going to look it's not like uh, elevation in other programs that you can only see outside of the building now you can even see the frames here i mean the grid line this when we for example when you say d here when you say d here d will be this is d and you're going to see this you're going to see this frame this line in the side view when you say four for example if you choose one of them four four will be this one here four will be this so you're going to look at this whether this direction or the other direction so this is how we're going through this elevation so let's say i choose two press okay now what happens here change to two at the top you will see this is where are you at the sorry 
we are at the second grid line like this is second green line is here and you will see a b c d which is this point here it is a you can see here a this is b this is c so this is b and this is c and this is d you can see them it's all there look it's written here elevation view 2 you can see from the top of it now how can i change between the elevation faster instead of clicking here and select something there is another way that we can change between the elevation which you have these two keys this is just simply goes among the elevation that they have it activate the view then simply click on this one you'll see it changed to b another click i'll go for c d come back to one two three so move up in the list the list that we have it you'll see it's gonna change the same thing for this plan view activate plan view i mean i can click on the plan and choose the story that they have it for example story 2 press ok I and mean, you'll see here story 2 z equal to 6 meter or i can use the two keys here which is moving up between the stories you'll see here change story 3 z equal to 9 and if you have different things or modeling you'll be able to see within here now there is nothing that's why you, you don't see any difference but you only see from here that it's changing between the plans now if you want to add another one you can still add another window or something whatever you want to close it up to you some people only working with one and prefer they have two this is the views we have it here and the model explorer now we all know that all the program they have menus now the menus will come back to them and we have some quick icons that will use them while working at the same time we have them here for drawing so this part here the vertical one here it's for drawing mainly we use this part for drawing those are for accessing so analysis design some modeling part can be used view I mean quick access toolbars not everything inside here but pretty much the things that you're using them often you can access them here always we can go back to the menus and wherever we need something we can find it from there and if you don't know the name of them basically the same icons will appear within the list the same icons that you will see them here if their name I mean if you hover the mouse over it it'll pop out a name of it basically you can find them from the list so we'll talk about the required icons I'm not gonna go through all of them because there are many things that might not need them for a simple structural analysis and design so we'll go through them things that were required for the view design analysis defining things that will be enough to create a base for the later learning so if you have the base you'll be able to advance or explore more teach yourself go for different modeling complex modeling analysis and design in order to learn more now for the interface what else do we have it here uh, the units basically will appear from here we're not going to change for now in the beginning we select the units then uh, I believe for the interface that will be enough for now uh, we will talk about the things gradually when we start modeling which will bring a pro uh, an example and over that example we start modeling to see what we have to do for the starting from the columns remember uh, etabs does not design foundation so it is the superstructure above the foundation they have the same company they have safe that you can export the data to the and then from there you can design it's the foundation because that software made for designing 
foundation, which is CSI safe. If we have time, we can just show to you how to transfer the load from there to safe and from safe at least. Let's say you'll be able to, because you have to design the foundation when you're designing a building. In the next video, we'll start by bringing drawing and start modeling. Modeling is one of the important step in ETAPS. If you model a structure wrong, then everything will be wrong. So you have to pay attention in the modeling. Make sure there is no gap. There is no misconnection. There is nowhere that you put it's supposed to be fixed. You put hinge or somewhere the column beams are not linked. or There is a gap in the uh, connections or let's say the slab. If you have any mistake in the modeling, then the rest is for nothing. So you have to pay attention closely to the modeling part in order to be able to do analysis and design in a correct way. So if you have any mistake, then the rest will be mistake, will be wrong automatically. I will guide you through these steps gradually. Thanks for listening.